back to the lecture series on bioelectricity. So, we are in the section of plant bioelectricity. So, in the first class in the plant bioelectricity, we talked about the overall scheme of things. Just a brief recap what we have just uh, talked in our previous lecture. So, what is being considered is in the whole life cycle or in the food chain is in the solar system where we all live. Sun is the major form of energy and this energy is being trapped on the floor of earth by the green plants. And the green plants eventually synthesize food. So, these are ate by the herbivores and then the herbivores are being consumed by the carnivores and then the carnivore dies and then again all the organic and inorganic matter gets into the soil and again this whole process continues. So, this is basically the food chain. From the food chain we took a deviation telling that during 1970s the discovery of the hydrothermal vents deep under the sea where the no sunlight is reaching kind of set another paradigm of life forms evolving where most of the bioelectrical phenomena which are taking place are independent of sunlight. That was one paradigm shift and apart from it in our previous class we talked about the anatomy of the plant, the gross anatomy, the leaves, the stem, the flowers and in the flowers we talked about we will be talking about the disensitized solar cells and uh, in terms of the xylem and the phloem vessels, once we will be talking about the plant movement with the mimosa and the venous flytrap, we will be talking about those structure and their significance. So, in this class, we will start with the basic photosynthetic machinery, which is uh, fairly conserved among all the green plants which has evolved on the floor of earth. Of course, there are certain plants which follow a certain bit of a shortcut. But the overall scheme of things of electron transfer is fairly same and the major molecule which involved in the electron in trapping the sunlight is chlorophyll. So, let us start where we left in the last class. Now, let us go to the microscopic details of a leaf or the green pigments or the structure which is involved in trapping the solar energy. Okay. So, let us resume the class. Photosynthesis. Let us get the whole complete basic of photosynthesis under the heading of plant bioelectricity. as we have already discussed at some point that the whenever we talk about electricity there could be two modes of transport of charges either it could be through electrons or it could be through ions. These are the two major modes. In this situation what we will we are dealing with is essentially the electron transfer and the electron transfer chain across the membrane and which leads to the energy production eventually. So, let us move on to the next slide where we will be talking about the basic structure. So, in the last class we talked about the basic structure of the leaf something like this. Okay. Okay. Now, we will take basically what we will be dealing here is the primary event of photosynthesis which is taking place across the leaf. So, if you look at the leaf, there will be certain leaves on top of it there will be a slightly waxy coating and underneath is the epidermal layer where basically all these machineries are there. So, all the biological uh, structures are consist of cells. So, the plant cells and animal cells there are some basic differences. The most fundamental difference is the plant cell have something called a cell wall, whereas the animal cell does not have it. Okay. So, apart from it plant cells have a structures called plastids or chloroplast, where all this 
light trapping machinery is being housed, whereas animal cell does not have any such structure. So, these are the very gross difference between plant and animal cell. So, if we look at this leaf, so this leaf essentially consists of a series of cells like this. So, these are the individual cells. If I take a cross section or something like that. So, these cells have something called a cell wall and inside the cell wall you have the whole machinery of everything. So, the nucleus, this is the nucleus and then you have certain which I am putting on red. These are those small structures which are called your plastids or the structure which are basically holding your light trapping machinery. Okay. So, what we will be doing now? So, from the macro structure of the leaf, now we are moving into the cellular structure. Within the cellular structure, now we are moving into the subcellular structure and the subcellular structures. So, there are I will just take a little backward here, how they have probably evolved. So, one of the theories about this particular chloroplast like structure is this that they were probably at some point of time on the floor of earth, these were independent um, microbial species and some or other they have parasitized on some of these plant like structures and they became part of it. The reason why it is hypothesized like this is the small chloroplast structure what you see they contain their independent DNA and whereas, the cell itself has its another set of DNA which ensures that it divides. So, essentially what we are talking about is that within a individual cell the nucleus has its own DNA and the chloroplast has its own DNA. So, that set people thinking and the current acceptable mostly acceptable hypothesis is this that at some point or other those microbes parasitize the plants and uh, become part of it some way or other. So, now the question arises, so how the plants were deriving food before that if that is the situation. So, the answer is we really do not know, I mean what was really the I mean how the whole food chain was functioning at that point of time if we really think in that way and that they were parasitized and then the plants then acquire the ability to you know synthesize food. So, but leaving that debate aside, let us try to explore this structure of the chloroplast now and what made this structure so very special that it can trap the sunlight. Okay. So, now the next slide what I will be doing is that I will be getting the cross section of this structure, how it looks like. So, this is where we were structure. So, this is the nucleus with the N, this is the cell wall and this is the chloroplast. Now, the chloroplast structure essentially is something like this. It is a double membranous structure like this. So, there are okay. So, this is how the structure apparently look like in a regular microscope. So, <laughs> inside this what you will observe is something like a very interesting membranous network like this. There are many of them out here. 
and these are connected with each other at different level. like this and I will just highlight all the names and everything. These may be connected to another set of structures like this. At multiple level, these are connected. I'm just simplifying the diagram. Okay. So this kind of a structure, what I have just now drawn, is basically called thylakoid membrane. And these thylakoid membranes are also double structured. So one of the beauty of most of these structures are these are all, you know, double membranous structure. Something like this. like this. So, this is how the structure looks like. And there are empty space what you people are seeing in this picture. This empty space is essentially called the stromal space. Something like this. Okay. So, this is your stromal space, stroma, and this structure is called thylakoid membranous structure. Thylakoid membrane and this connecting link are called stroma lamellae and this whole pile what you see this piled up structure like this this is called granum And so, this is the outer membrane of the chloroplast, and this is the inner membrane of chloroplast. Outer membrane, inner membrane, you have the granum, you have the stroma, stroma is the space the blank space out there, then you have intermembranous space in between. So, this is the in the YOLO what I am drawing now is the intermembranous space and always uh, there is one very interesting thing in all this structure there are a lot of intermembranous space between all these membranes. These are the intermembranous space. Okay. So, this is the intermembranous space. Uh, fine. So, so this is essentially the whole structure of the chloroplast which is involved in trapping the sunlight. Now, the question arises where exactly it is trapping the sunlight. This is very important. Okay. So, I have drawn the gross geometry. So, as of now what we have done, I am going very slowly because you have to understand this is structure otherwise things will become kind of you know confusing. So, we talked about the whole structure of the leaf, then we move down to the structure of the individual cells, we talked about the different organelles cell wall, chloroplast, nucleus and we highlighted the fact that this chloroplast structure is also called plastid actually, the synonymous. So, they have their own set of genome or DNA in them. Then from there we moved on to the 
molecular architecture of the chloroplast and now we will be getting into the exact chemical architecture where all these different molecules sun trapping molecules which are setting. Okay. So, one thing you always have to remember in this kind of structures most of these membranes or all these membrane membranes are asymmetric that is why I am continuously highlighting which one is the outer membrane which is in the inner membrane. Essentially whenever I am talking about that they are asymmetric it means the property of the membrane it is suppose this is my this is the membrane this my hand is a membrane. So, this side has a different texture as compared to this side. Okay. So, just imagine if this is the membrane the property of this side is different from this side that is what we meant by asymmetry of a membrane. There are certain molecules which could bind here there are certain molecules which cannot bind here. The electron transport may take place from one direction whereas, some molecule may be synthesized on the other direction. Okay. So, slightly highlighting this structure what I have drawn for you is the stroma. This stromal what you see the vacant spots that is not really a vacant spot there are a lot of molecules which are present there which are involved in synthesis of energy rich molecule and uh, carbohydrates and all other things. So, basically the empty space what you see is rich in organic uh, molecules which will help for uh, the synthesis, uh, synthesis of wide range of molecule and they are coupled with several other uh, structures within this micro architecture of the uh, chloroplast. Okay. So, <laughs> now coming back that where these molecules are sitting. So, most of these molecules which are taking part in the photosynthetic events they are all sitting somewhere like this. So, they are kind of sitting like this out here. See, I am drawing those pink color dots. So, these are imagine these are series of different molecules which involved in electron transfer, and they are all membrane bound. Since they are all membrane bound, their structural integrity is maintained when they are in the membrane as soon as we take them out from the membrane their structural integrity will be lost. And that is why they are so very challenging to crystallize and their understanding their exact structural details. Okay. So, this is where all these molecules are sitting and we will be talking about these individual molecule one by one as we will be highlighting the whole process of electron transfer along this route. So, for a layman understanding what exactly is happening is overall thing is this I will use the black and okay. so light falls out here like this and through a series of oxidation reduction reaction the electron flows along this if you follow my arrow or something say for example, like this let us do it. And in that process of electron flow so this is H nu or this is sun. So, this is where the electron transport chain is moving. And this electron transport chain eventually leading to synthesis of molecules. Essentially what is happening here this electron transport chain out there is creating a potential difference across that asymmetric membrane. So, across this membrane what you see out here there is a potential difference it almost functions 
like a battery or a battery or something like a device which can you know generate sufficient energy to synthesize molecules okay so now we have to go one by one to figure out the molecules which are involved in this game before we do that let's revisit the basic reaction of photosynthesis so which is essentially your co2 plus h2o forming carbohydrate plus oxygen so which is essentially what you are talking about is coh2o and so your raw material is carbon dioxide and water which is abundant water is very abundant and carbon dioxide is also very abundant and your output is carbohydrate the glucose the major source of energy and oxygen which ensures that we all breathe the first challenging question in this equation which haunted for a while was who is supplying the oxygen is it the carbon dioxide or is it the water it was found out that it is the water which contributes in the generation of oxygen and that discovery helps us to figure out that photosynthesis could be divided into two stages one stage where water is getting split the other stage is where energy rich molecules are synthesized through a process so broadly speaking the whole photosynthesis event could be classified into two parts one part is purely electron transfer so let's kind of put it like this <coughs> sun is falling the sun rays are falling they are being trapped by we'll be talking about the details of this structure chlorophyll molecules and this leads to a series of electron motion this whole process falls under light reaction and within light reaction rx stand for the reaction there are two stages one is called photosystem 1 ps1 other one is called ps2 and it is a ps2 where water is getting splitted and this whole electron transfer leading to generation of energy rich molecules which is essentially the carbohydrates okay this part falls under something called dark reaction it is not dependent on sunlight as such this part falls under light reaction which is essentially dependent on sunlight there is no sunlight the light reaction won't proceed any further okay. so under the broad umbrella of photosynthesis you have light reaction and dark reaction so in this course we are not dealing with the dark reaction i will just give you one example of dark reaction uh, just in terms of the c3 and c4 plants about their efficiency and why some plants are efficient some plants are not uh, in terms of photosynthetic output but i'll be will be what we'll be doing will be mostly talking about hmm, we'll be talking about the light reaction so within the light reaction let's enumerate what all we are going to cover the first thing we have already covered is 
light reaction. The first thing is structure of chloroplast. which we have already dealt with. Okay. The second thing we will be dealing with basic history of photosynthesis or rather first of all the basic reaction of photosynthesis, which we have already I have kind of highlighted C O 2 plus H 2 O forming C H 2 O plus oxygen. Okay. Now, third thing will be the will be dealing will be the discovery of the basic equation of Photosynthesis. All the reactions which led to the point where we are now, okay. and that will take you from the point of Levisure all the way up to the 19th century when photosystems were being discovered. Okay. So next thing, what we will be dealing with is the structure of chlorophyll and how they trap energy. Structure of chlorophylls to trap solar energy. And followed by that, we will be talking about a very interesting unsolved concept called reaction center of just putting P S as photosynthesis, okay. Reaction center of photosynthesis. And sixth, we will be dealing in this phase will be oxygen evolved. coming from water. This is the next thing what we are going to deal with, how the oxygen is coming. After this, once we gone this far in this, we will be talking about the actual physical electron transfer, how the electron transfer is taking place. So, essentially next two to three classes, that is what we are going to deal with. And before I move into that, I will have I will be taking two classes where I will be dealing with how you the very basic concept of uh, your uh, reduction potential, because this reduction potential concept will be very essential for you to understand how the electron transport is taking place. So, we have done with the structure of the chloroplast, we are done with the basic reaction of it. Next what we will be doing in our next lecture will be the discovery, discovery of the basic equation of photosynthesis and the structure of the chlorophyll which are there to you know trap the sunlight. So, we will close in here in the next class we will resume with these two.